Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this time of prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 15. Through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may rest upon your holy hill? Whoever leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing that is right. Who speaks the truth from the heart and bears no deceit on the tongue? who does no evil to a friend and pours no scorn on a neighbour, in whose sight the wicked are not esteemed, but who honours those who fear the Lord, whoever has shown a neighbour never sh word, who does not lend money in hope of gain, nor takes a bribe against the innocent, whoever does these things shall never fall, through the greatness of your mercy I will come into your house to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, lead us to our heavenly home by single steps of self-restraint and deeds of righteousness, through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Old Testament readings from 1 Kings. Um, we're continuing the story of Solomon um, and we're about to enter into the start of the building of the temple. God gave Solomon wisdom, the deepest of understanding, the largest of hearts. There was nothing beyond him, nothing he couldn't handle. Solomon's wisdom outclassed the, uh, the vaunted wisdom of wise men of the East, outshone the famous wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone, wiser than Ethan, the Ezraite, wiser than Hermon, wiser than Calcol and Darada, the sons of Mahal. He became famous among all the surrounding nations. He created 3,000 proverbs. His songs added up to 1,005. He knew all about plants, from the huge cedars that grew in Lebanon to the tiny hyssop that grows in the cracks of a wall. He understood everything about animals and birds, reptiles and fish sent by kings from all over the earth, who had heard of his reputation. People came from far and near to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. Hiram, king of Tyre, sent ambassadors to Solomon when he heard that he had been crowned king in David's place. Hiram had loved David his whole life. Solomon responded saying, You know that David, my father, was not able to build a temple in honour of God because of the wars he had to fight on all sides until God finally put them down. But now, God has provided peace all around. No one against us, nothing at odds with us. Now here is what I want to do. Build a temple in honour of God, my God, following the promise that God gave to David, my father, namely, your son whom I will provide to succeed you as king. He will build a house in my honour. And here is how you can help. Give orders for cedars to be cut from the Lebanon forest. My loggers will work alongside yours. I'll pay your men whatever wage you set. We both know that there is no one like you Sidonians that for cutting timber. When Hiram got Solomon's message, he was delighted, exclaiming, Blessed be God for giving David such a wise son to rule this flourishing people. Then he sent this message to Solomon. I received your request for the cedars and cypresses. It's as good as done. Your wish is my command. My lumberjacks will haul the timbers from the Lebanon forest to the sea, assemble them into log rafts, float them to the place you set, then have them dis disassembled for you to haul away. All I want from you is that you feed my crew. In this way, Hiram supplied all the cedars and cypress timbers that Solomon wanted. In his turn, Solomon gave Hiram 125,000 bushels of wheat 
and 115,000 gallons of virgin olive oil. He did this every year. And God, for his part, gave Solomon wisdom, just as he promised. The healthy peace between Hiram and Solomon was formalized by a treaty. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Reading from Acts 15. Um, Paul and Barnabas uh, are in disputes about circumcision and are going back to Jerusalem to argue uh, and find a, a resolution to this issue. It wasn't long before some Jews showed up from Judea, insisting that everyone be circumcised. If you're not circumcised in the Mosaic fashion, you can't be saved. Paul and Barnabas were on their feet at once in fierce protest. The church decided to resolve the matter by sending Paul, Barnabas and a few others to put it before the apostles and leaders in Jerusalem. After they were sent off, and on their way, they told everyone they met as they travelled through Phoenicia, sorry, Phoenicia and Samaria about the breakthrough to the non-Jewish outsiders. Everyone who heard the news cheered. It was terrific news. When they got to Jerusalem, Paul and Barnabas were generously received, graciously received by the whole church, including the apostles and leaders. They reported, reported on their recent journey and how God had used them to open things up to the outsiders. Some Pharisees stood up to say their peace. They'd become believers but continued to hold the, to the old hard party lines of the Pharisees. You have to circumcise the pagan converts, they said. You must make them keep the law of Moses. The apostles and leaders called a special meeting to consider the matter. The arguments went on and on, back and forth, getting more and more heated. Then, Peter took the floor. Friends, you will know that from, the, uh, from early on, God made it quite plain that he wanted the pagans to hear the message of this good news and embrace it. And not in any second-hand or roundabout way, but first-hand, straight from my mouth. And God, who can't be fooled by any pretense, on our part, but always knows a person's thoughts, gave them the Holy Spirit, exactly as he gives him to us. He treated the outsiders exactly as he treated us, beginning at the very centre of who they were and working from the centre outwards, cleaning up their lives as they trusted and believed him. So why are you now trying to out-God God? Loading these new believers down with rules that crushed our ancestors and crushed us too. Don't we believe that we are saved because the Master Jesus amazingly and out of sheer generosity removed, moved to save us just as he did those from beyond our nation? So what are we arguing about? There was dead silence. No one said a word. With the room quiet, Barnabas and Paul reported matter-of-factly of, of the miracles and wonders God had done among the nations through their ministry. The silence deepened. You could hear a pin drop. James broke the silence. Friends, listen. Simeon has told us the story of how God at the very outset made sure that racial outsiders were included. This is a perfect argument with the words of the prophets. Sorry. This is in perfect agreement with the words of the prophets. After this, I'm coming back. I'll rebuild David's ruined house. I'll put all the pieces together again. I'll make it look like new, so outsiders who seek will find. So they'll have a place to come to. All the pagan peoples inclu included in what I'm doing. God said it, and now he's doing it. It's no afterthought. He's always known he would do this. So here is my decision. We're not going to unnecessarily burden non-Jewish people who turn to the Master. We'll write them a letter and tell them, be careful not to get involved in activities connected with idols, 
to guard against the morality of sex and marriage, to not serve food offensive to Jewish Christians, blood for instance. This is basic wisdom from Moses, preached and honoured for centuries, now in the city after city, as we have met and kept the Sabbath. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Father has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gift, for your sacrifice made upon the cross for each and every one of us. We thank you that you give us this gift freely, that we can enter into your presence to God, the creator of the universe, that we can pray to you and talk with you, that we can live with you and you in us freely. There's nothing we can do to buy this gift, Lord. Thank you that you love us so much that you want to live and dwell in us and with us. Help us to cherish that gift, Lord. Help us to work from the inside outwards, cleaning our lives. Help us to show your love to the world, to spread your good news. Help us this day as we move forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the Father, as COVID continues to rage, raging on and the infection rates, especially around Harrogate and North Yorkshire, increase, we pray for people to be wise in their actions, to limit their interactions with others, or if they are, to do it safely, Lord, Pray that this pandemic can be resolved soon, that people can find peace again and security when they leave their homes, go back to work or school, that the anxiety that fills people with dread can be released and a peace can, be, can fill them, Lord. Help us be wise in our actions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless your church in this world, your church in this country, and your church in this town, that we can do your work to show your love, to feed the hungry, release the captives, to love our neighbours as ourselves. Help us this day, Lord. Most glorious and holy God, whose servant Hildegard, strong in the faith, was caught up in the vision of your heart, heavenly courts. By the breath of your spirit, open our eyes to glimpse your glory and our lips to sing your praises with all the angels through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so with longing we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you, everybody here. Um, it's great to be able to lead this time of prayer. Um, have a great day and God bless.